In this tutorial, let us write some codes on index arrays. In the last tutorial, we were able to print each item in the array with this code. If we study the code very well, we notice some things. The first one is that we notice that this piece of code is a form of repetition. So it means this is a loop. And also, we notice that we have three repetitions and we have three elements in the array. At every point in time, the number of elements in the array will be the number of repetitions we'll be having. And this perfectly follows for loop. So we know this is a for loop. The third thing to note is that if you look at the value here, you see that this is the same thing as our starting point, which is zero. You can remember that normally we have something like this. Our starting point is usually zero. This is the first loop. This is one. This is the second loop. And this is the third loop. You can see that the values of dollar i are zero, one, two which is exactly what we have here. So this is 0, 1, 2. So we can draw some conclusions that dollar $i equals to 0. This is the starting point. Our condition is dollar $i is less than 3 because we have 3 loops, which is also the number of elements in the array 1, 2, 3. And also our increment is 1. So with this information, we can write a for loop. The for loop will be something like for dollar i, which is our starting point, equals to zero. Dollar i is less than three, which is the number of items in the array, and we have dollar i plus plus. Now to write the block of code. You only need to execute a piece of line and repeat three times. So to write it, we have echo. This is city one. We don't know how to get the value of one now. So we can repeat it as city one is dollar cities. So instead of writing zero now you can write dollar i because in the first loop dollar i will be zero in the second loop dollar i will be one and in the third loop dollar i will be two so this matches what we have here the only thing we have to change is this value of one because for the three iterations we'll be having city one is this city one is this city one is this So let us put down this into coding and later we can adjust the value of city high. So this is our ID. So instead of this, we can remove this code or just comment it. Control backspace. So we have four dollar I is zero dollar i is less than three and we have dollar i plus plus so we have echo we have for now we are still having city one is so we have dollar cities so we have opening and closing bracket and instead of writing zero now we have the value of dollar i so we can add this break statement you can easily copy from here so we have something like this so let us check the result on the browser. 
So very fresh. So we have city one is Ikeja, city two, city one is Kano, city one is Ore. So let us find a way to manipulate this value to be one, two, three. So to write city one, it's going to be written as city. You notice that at every point in time, our dollar i is increasing. It starts from zero. So it means this one should be one plus dollar i. So you can have something like this dollar i plus one. At first time, this dollar i will be zero. In the second time, it will be 1 plus 1, which is 2. And at the third time, it will be 2 plus 1, which is 3. So let us write this in our IDE. So this is our code. So to write this one, we have to do the calculation first before appending to city. So to do that, we have to do some concatenation. So we have to do some concatenation. We will learn more on concatenation in string. So we have to add the values before appending to city. So we have dollar i plus one. So in the first case we have zero plus one, which is one. Second iteration will be one plus one, which is two, and third one will be two plus one, which is three. So with this, we will have our code. So let us refresh. So we have city one, city two, city three. So with this code, we're able to generate all these lines of code. And actually, if you add more to it, for example, if you like to add more cities like Wari, like let's add Kaduna. Let's add something like uh, Badminton. You know, probably another place like Shokoto. So to continue, so let's add like Local Jam, like Line. So it continues. So let's print this out. Notice that this value is no more 3 because the elements in the array has changed. So instead of 3, it should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this should be 9. Let's check the value. So you can see we have all the 9 cities in the array. And one more thing I would like to add is that to avoid changing this value every time, there is a way to know the size of any array. It is very simple. To know the size of any array, we use a function called count. To find the size of the array, as in this is dollar size, we should hold the size of the array. It is written as count. We have to count this array. Count dollar cities. So this will count the number of items in dollar cities and assign the value to this variable. So in order to avoid changing this value, we can now add size here, which is the size of our array. So let's save the answer in the browser. You see that we have the same results. So to prove this to be right, let us add more cities. So let us add Calabar. So we can add more cities. Let us add. Let us add Jalingo. So this time around, we are not changing the value of the size because we know that this function will automatically get the size of the array so let's save and check our results in the browser so you can see that automatically the size of the array changes because of the function 
So it means anytime you want to loop through an array, you can easily use the functions from here to here. 